but fast to a film that demands your attention. Hostile, the debut from director Sunita Gale, focuses on the UK's complicated relationship with migrant communities. Told through the stories of four participants from black and Asian backgrounds, the film reveals the impact of the evolving hostile environment, a term used by the UK government in 2012 to illustrate the atmosphere they wanted to create for migrants with the intention of provoking them to leave of their own accord. This is a day of national shame, and it has come about because of a hostile environment policy that was begun in this country. It's untold horrors that stand before us. And in time, they can say, you don't belong here. Go back to my country. You can deport me. You've got no rights. A threat to national security. The Empire Windrush brings to Britain 500 Jamaicans. Let's make them very welcome. They are now viewed and treated as illegal migrants. But it's not just the victims of Windrush, it's students and families. We have no recourse to public funds. There's no form of support for them. They don't have the money to feed themselves. We support with meals needed. It's really hard to live in this country. We are just surviving. I treat these people like sh I wonder how much compassion you'll hear in a country where leaders spread irrational fear. We have a new colonial divide in the world between the immigrants and white working class communities. It's about the way those people look. They don't know who I am. To them, I'm illegal. This is a country that has been built on migration. At what points did things change? Black race relations disintegration. This is our... Whoops, a daisy. That was abrupt. Um, that was the trailer for Hostile. It's been featured as part of BFI Southbank's season. The camera is ours. Britain's women documentary makers. Uh, Sunita, welcome to the program. I mean, it does seem particularly timely at the moment. Obviously, with the U Ukrainian refugee crisis very much on all our minds. But let's talk first specifically about the film. I mentioned Hostile Environment. Tell us more about that policy declared by the then Home Secretary Theresa May back in. 2013, I think it was. Uh, how much did that provide the sort of jumping off point for the film for you? Hello, Sunita. Hello, Marielle. Nice to, nice to meet you. Sorry about that. I was on mute temporarily. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, Tech. So really, the, um, the hostile environment is a set of policies that have been put in place, not only by the Conservative government, but successive governments. And as you rightly pointed out, to make life so unbearable for individuals, they either voluntarily leave, or they get deported, or they just don't come. And that hostile environment has been really... Uh, uh, a set of policies like no recourse to public funds and no recourse to public funds is a condition that's placed upon one's visa, which doesn't give them access to certain benefits to disability allowance to the furlough scheme. And so it, it kind of to universal credit, it kind of limits people's rights. So it, it limits their rights to work, it limits their rights to access things, it limits their rights to stay. And I think the hostile environment is created to create that hostility, which drives people away from our country. And, and I think the film kind of, it, the film, it wasn't a starting point for me. I actually was going to be making a completely different film. And it was only when I was filming migrant communities because of the pandemic, I came across this hostile environment. And I came across how, our migrant communities that we so deeply appreciate appreciate were being affected by these policies. You're talking about it in the present rather than the past. I was talking about a policy from 2013, but, but you're talking about it uh, as though it's very much informing the situation still today. Was that, was that your experience as you were making the film? Absolutely. I mean, I did go back because I, I thought to myself, well, hang on, this, this policy this web of policies couldn't have just come about in 2012, 2013. And my research took me back to, to legislation and bills that kind of informed that body, that policy, that system. And what I was discovering as, as I was researching and, and evolving and creating my film Hostile was that this is very much in force today. I mean, I think in 2017, when the Windrush scandal broke and Amelia Gentleman was part of that, 
it kind of brought the hostile environment to the forefront. And it was on people's mind that, hang on, people came here, you know, in the, in the early 50s to work in our country legally, lawfully, given citizenship, only to find out five decades later that their paperwork didn't exist, that their landing cards had been destroyed and that they were no longer British and therefore were going to be deported as in the case of Anthony Bryan. And that was in 2017, that's very recent. And since then, we have seen tens of thousands of people in that precarious position, people like Anthony, people like Farouk, who, who believe they are here legally and lawfully, but are have these conditions and these stipulations that are just set against them, which disallows them to stay here. So it very much is in force today. And that's the scary thing about this realization really whilst making this film. Yeah, it's ironic, isn't it, that you're talking about um, this situation and the hostile environment at the same time as, as you know, we're the only country in Europe that's still insisting on visas from Ukrainians uh, escaping from Ukraine. How much do you think that still informs our attitudes and, and, and how government makes policy in this area? Absolutely. I mean, right now we have the Nationality and Borders Bill, which is currently ping ponging between the Commons and Lords. And I think it's it's that's just indicative of where we are as a country. If we're putting bills in place that are restricting the rights of refugees and asylum seekers and restricting the rights of people that are eligible to dual citizenship whilst we have a war going on in Europe. I mean, it just that just screams hostility. And it's just so disappointing that actually at this critical point in history, we are the worst country to be accepting refugees at this time. And again, it's down to the paperwork. You know, my research told me that these applications, they're just so lengthy, they're so confusing, they're not in the language of the people that want to actually apply. And so it's so difficult to even go through that process. And it's just heartbreaking mm. to know that I think as of a couple of days ago, only 50 people have come through that system and that process. And, and, and we have tens of thousands of people displaced and millions in the end because of this war. Yeah, we heard from uh, one of our listeners today talking about his experience in trying to get his wife's family over. And he described to my colleague, Matt Chorley, that he'd spent three hours trying to fill in the form. And of course, he's an English speaker and, and used to filling in uh, English documents so you can, or British documents. You can imagine how difficult that would be for someone, you know, fleeing the sort of situation that, that you were talking about. Now, to talk about you for a moment, your parents migrated to the UK in the 1950s, I think, following partition in, in 1947. Uh, and you actually used an interview with your mum before the film was completed, I think. Oh, sorry, that you, you, you used an interview uh, with your mum from five years ago. I know she sadly passed away before the film was, was finished. Um, how much did making the film make you reflect on your parents' experiences coming to the UK, what it must have been like for them? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's the reason why I made the film, that and the pandemic. You know, when the pandemic struck, it took me right back to my childhood, living in migrant communities with Black and Asian and working class individuals. And it was really their story and their history that drove me to make this film. And I think that migrant story of my parents came here, they contributed economically and well as culturally and had 10 children. And the majority of us have, have mixed marriages. And so you think about that and think about, well, if my, first of all, my parents would never have been able to come here at this time because of the restrictions around the hostile environment, but also to think that as a filmmaker, that my wouldn't exist if my parents had tried to come here at that time. And that really, sometimes it's quite upsetting to think that of the, the, the contribution that my family has made to this country and myself and, and the children I have now to think that that would never have happened if I had attempted to, or they had attempted to come here now. So I think, yeah, that that really did inform my, my narrative around making this film, but also you're right in pointing out that my mom's story and being a survivor of partition of India and Pakistan and the struggle that she went through, and she, the ref, she was a refugee in India, so she had lived experiences of this. And that really um, interview was a really important interview for me to place in the film. And I did shoot it five years ago, not knowing that she would be my debut. 
And as you mentioned, she did pass away during my post. And um, I'm just deeply grateful for her and for everything that she did for me and my family. Just finally, you know, as we're speaking, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people are fleeing uh, conflict in Ukraine, as we mentioned earlier in this discussion. Um, what have you made of the public responses here to those refugees? I mean, it does feel that there's been a sort of national opening of arms, uh, even if that's not fully reflected in the government's policy. But th there's also a slightly worrying aspect to it of choice, of, of othering some refugees and embracing others. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is the divisiveness of politics and also the, the rhetoric around and the racism and the scapegoating. I think that, you know, there are good migrants and bad migrants, good refugees and bad refugees. And I think we need to dispel that. We need to put that to one side and not have that narrative around this. People are fleeing persecution and war on a daily basis. And this has brought it right home to us because this is in Europe. And it's made us realize that actually, this is very real. And this is something that we as a society need to get behind and help these individuals that are struggling now. And I think that uh, you're right, I'm on a cinema tour and at, at my cinema events doing my Q&A, there has been this massive opening of arms and people really wanting to welcome the people from Ukraine. And I think that's indicative of where we are right now in society. It looks like it looks like that uh, government policy of hostile environment has failed then, doesn't it? Which is Absolutely. only going to be good news. Um, Sunita Gale, thank you so much for joining us on, on Times Radio. You can watch the film at a special screening as part of the BFI South Bank season. The camera is ours, Britain's women documentary makers. Sunita will be at the screening and discuss her film on the 15th of March. <laughs>